Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at an application known as LucidChart. We're going to look at working with it directly from Google Drive and LucidChart is nice because it'll integrate directly into your drive space. Um, you should know that as an alternative if you don't want to do this you can go to the site directly, sign up for an account and do it there. But if you'd like to work from it from Drive, we'll show you how to do that now. And LucidChart is an application that allows you to create concept maps or mind maps. So a visual representation of information uh, which can be very very effective um, to have students do this or to do it yourself and present the information in, in a more graphical way. Okay to start with when you're in Google Drive and you click on new you get the standard options Google Docs, Sheets, Slides and there's also a more option at the bottom. And mousing over that you can see I have Google Forms, Drawings, uh, Google Maps, Sites, etc. And then I've got a few other things. These are extensions or applications that can be added into the Google Drive space. You'll see that I have LucidChart diagrams right here. Um, but if you don't have it here, you'd simply come down to Connect More Apps. Now when you get to Connect More Apps, well, you see LucidChart is coming up here, but if it doesn't come up as one of your first choices, you simply type in LucidCharts into the search box and now you have two options. You have LucidChart for Education, which is the one that I have installed, or LucidChart Diagrams. Uh, to be honest, the difference isn't vast. You can pick either one and it's fine. You can see that I already have it installed because I have the Rate It option here on the button as opposed to Connect. Okay, so I'm going to cancel out, but you would just go through that process of setting it up by clicking Connect and there'll be a couple of screens to step through. Okay, once you have it installed, you can come into your Google Drive and you can simply work your way down and click on the LucidChart um, icon. And it'll open right here. Okay, you'll notice that it's asking, uh, it's asking me if I want to get a special discount. That's because LucidChart, like a lot of software, comes with a free version and a paid version. Now, in the basic difference in LucidChart, if you look at some of these diagrams, you can see that there are shapes and there are connectors, and that's basically how it works. The free version is going to limit you on the number of objects you can put on a chart, and I believe it's 60. The other thing it's going to limit you to is three concept maps. Okay, so if you exceed, if well, you can't exceed the three actually without going to the paid version. But what you can do is if this is something you're using occasionally for student products uh, or projects, they can output a map as a as a an image file like a JPEG, and then they can delete that and free up space. So limits to the free account, but still an interesting tool to take a look at. Now they do have some. Well, these are things I've played with in the past down here, but they do have some templates up at top. So they're showing you a template of a flow chart to get you started, um, network infrastructure. It's giving you different uh, options to start with, but you can start with blank and build your own. Now it's telling me here that I have three uh, free accounts are restricted to three active documents, so I would have to upgrade. And I believe this is the case because LucidChart in the past allowed five documents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete a couple of mine. You can see they were nothing terribly important anyway. So now that I only have two documents, when I click blank, I should come to a screen that allows me to start uh, start my project. That is a very, very simple um, piece of software. I simply click and drag out onto the screen the objects that I want to include. If I made a mistake with this, what I'd want to do is I'd want to click off it first, click it so it's selected, and just hit delete. And that way I can remove that. Okay, so to start with, you drag a block out. Let's try this. Uh, you can type in what you'd like in the block. If you've left the block, if you've deselected it, you can always select it again, double click it, and you can go in there and make the edits that you want to make. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details, but 
you can see that you can select it. You can reshape it by grabbing the boxes around the corner. You can put it on an angle if you wanted to, although I'm not sure that that's um, something you do a lot in this particular environment. And then you can continue your um, mind map by drawing, a, uh, dragging additional spaces out here, additional shapes, rather. So, so I'm going to put one there, and then I'm going to connect these two to show the relationship. Now I could just stack different things out here, but we're really interested in this relationship. So when you click on an object, you're going to get not only these squares, which allow you to reshape it, you're also going to get the circles, which allow you to make a connection point. So there we go, there's exercise. Now, if I want to make a copy of this, let's say I like the shape and maybe I've done a little formatting to it, which we'll look at in the middle in, in a minute, and we don't want to have to go through that process again, I can always click on the shape. And if I right click and say copy, notice that it doesn't have, come on, And then I can right click and I can say paste. And when I go to do that, you'll see that it doesn't really use the right click menu um, in the same way you might be used to in other programs. So what they want you to do is to know that you can do a control C to copy it, a control X to cut it, and control V to paste it. So I'm simply going to do a control V since I already had it copied. And then I can drag this out. And I'll do that again. Remember, control V as long as it's on your clipboard. Um, you can do it multiple times. And then I'm going to double click in there and I'm going to say diet. And I'm going to say sleep. And then I can go through and, as you can see, connect up um, my different elements. Okay, if you don't like you can see that this is not exactly where I want it. That's easy. You just shift it over and it'll um, take care of that. As you click on here, it's going to give you some information. I mean, I could also, if it made sense, I can, I can link this shape to additional shapes. Uh, and then there are some options involved there as well. So any, any shape that you want to adjust or format, you simply click on the shape and you should get the tools up at top. Uh, to give you the appropriate options. So here we go. Let's say that we want this to be slightly, we want it to be a different font. We want it to be slightly larger. Uh, we'd like it to be bold. We'd like it to be italics. Of course, we wouldn't do all of these things. We can change the font color here. Um, and you can change the opacity as well. Generally with your font, I generally keep it at 100%. So you can change your color there. You can also use the eyedropper to select a color. If you have the color somewhere else on your screen, you can also use the color wheel where you can simply drag this around to find the color you want, a combination of, of dragging this bar on the left or on the right, I'm sorry, and dragging this to determine your color. Or if you have, happen to know the uh, hexadecimal number for the color. You can just type it right in there and, and that'll work as well. This is simply uh, shape options. So probably not the way I would work with it. Let me select the shape here. It's telling you this is one inch wide, um, three eighths of an inch tall, how much it's rotation, what type of angle, and it's positioned on the page. But it's usually easier just to click and drag this thing. What you can do, however, if you want, is you can Work with things like the edges. You have rounded the edges if you if you don't like the square corners, and you can also um, come in and put a shadow on it. So I've turned the shadow on, and you can see now underneath there that it's got a light uh, grayish color that fades. You can change the angle of that shadow so where the light is coming from. You can change the blur, which is how dense the image is. If I if I put the blur on zero, you can see that it darkens up a bit. So you can play with, with those different options. There's also a fill color here. So if I choose that, 
you can see it, it changes the color and you want to of course work with your font color and fill color to make them uh, very legible very easy to read there's a line color so I can adjust the outside line color to that um, and also now we're getting into line thickness so if I click here I can change the thickness of the outside line um, also some features for connectors so I can decide what type of arrow head I'd like on there um, I can also put arrows on both sides if that's appropriate for the connection that I'm using okay I can reverse the arrow using this A series of different things that I can do um, something else that's that's very handy so let's just say that I have this diet image and and you have a choice here I, I can either go with symbolic things like shapes and if I do this I want to consider at this level these three things are kind of three components three equal components so that I gave them the same shape that would be one way of doing it another way would simply be to come into say images and then upload an image from your computer. So let's give an example of that. I'll pop open a window. Great opportunity here to talk to students about copyright, etc. I'm going to search for diet. And I get all these wonderful images, but they're not really all mine to use. So if I go to label for reuse under tools, now these are things that I should be able to use um, copyright free. So there's one. It's a very large image. Let's see if that's going to work for us. 2500 by 18. Uh, 171 so I'll just save that image to my desktop I'm just gonna call it diet for now and then by using this image button I can browse and pick that image there it is that image comes in very large so you're going to need to resize that if you want to use it. Okay, that would require a little bit of rework, so I'm going to delete my connections here. And then I can connect it back up to the image. Note that as I insert objects, it keeps count for me over here, so I've got a total of 60 available to me, but I've used 7. That's 1, 2, 3, 4 shapes and 3 connectors. So that's uh, the limit that's going to be imposed on you by the free version. Okay, just so that you know, so you can keep an eye on that. But it is, it is a fair amount of space that you can do different things with. Okay, uh, the other thing is, is you can turn on additional shapes here. So if you slide down and you say plus shapes, now some of these are premium shapes I believe um, but basically here are things say for den Venn diagrams see mind mapping unfortunately is a premium feature uh, tech clip art maybe so different things different things that you can include also the option to in view, include video content so and then they just appear on the left. So different things that, that you can you can utilize. Okay, those are the basics. Um, the sharing options I'm not going to go into. They're very uh, very basic. You know you can publish this, and it's basically you're going to give it a name, and it's going to give you a link that you can share. You know as with most of these applications, it works the same way. The other thing that you can do. Um, is download this image so if you hit download as it's going to let you download it in a PDF format or a variety of image formats including uh, PNGs and JPEGs okay there's also um, an SVG which will make it you know more scalable it comes down kind of as a formula that works better with the with the provided images as opposed to a picture okay but you're welcome to try it either way And you download it, it's just going to create the file and allow you to keep it. And that's a good strategy. Um, see, blank diagram PDF, and I just save it to my desktop. And that's a strategy I would use to get around the three map limit.
Okay, so now that I've done that, if I, I could delete this file and that would free up more space. Okay, that's about it for Lucidchart. You can see that there are more advanced features here, but I, I, I think the basics get you a long way.